What's up, everyone? We're back. Dr. Maxfield. Dr. Shaw, and welcome back to our channel, Doctorly, where we talk about all things skincare and dermatology. Today, we have an exciting topic. Exciting topic to me. Uh, the word textured skin. What the heck does that mean? Uh, you know, I, I say it all the time, and I think I take it for granted. I say this product will improve skin texture. What the heck is texture? Like, what is it? What contributes to texture? So we're going to talk about what causes your skin to appear quote unquote textured. And we're gonna talk about the best products and best ingredients to really go after texture. And then we'll briefly kind of discuss some of the procedures that we can do to improve texture as well. Yeah, and when I hear texture, like my mind just goes down this rabbit trail. And I, I still am not sure, is it like rabbit trail or rabbit hole? I feel like you go down the trail and then you're in the hole, but either which way, like there, everything on your skin has a name, like adnexal tumors, all these little neoplasms, growth, all that is gonna be aside. We're just gonna be focusing on the common things that most people are gonna have in their life and then we'll just talk about again, all the ingredients and treatments that can help you. So improving your skin texture is the first step to having dewy skin. <laughs> and as you all know, that is my main goal in skincare. So when I started my skincare journey, I was out of that acne phase, to be honest. And I was in this phase where I just noticed I had these like little bumps on my skin and it just didn't look even. And I didn't have that sort of healthy glow that I was going for. And I didn't really understand what do I need to actually use to improve my texture? Well, the first step is to understand what's causing your texture. So we're gonna break all of that down and we're gonna discuss a new product release from Skin Fix, which is really exciting. So stay tuned for that. Here we go. Here we go. First, we wanna say thank you to Skin Fix. Uh, we just appreciate you coming alongside us for this texture. And, and also too, they uh, they had a great moisturizer that they put out recently as well. Uh, the Skin Fix Triple Lipid Peptide Cream. Obse if you guys follow me on other platforms, you know, unhealthy obsession with this product. Phenomenal, nothing like it in the moisturizing game as far as I've experience so absolutely love it so really excited to introduce this new product for them and thank you so much for sponsoring this video and they also uh, know the way to our heart there's two ways to my heart okay one uh if you send me food in the mail uh, big fan of that as many of you know and uh literature so they sent us studies we love when we get papers literature things to actually support claims that people make that have been published so uh we appreciate that and they sort of know what we're looking for yeah and I'd just like to say this too. So we we write we write all of our papers together for the most part. Most of our papers we published have been written together. And you know this we actually have a paper in the same journal. Just saying, just saying. Humble bra hashtag humble brag. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about what causes your skin to be textured. So a lot of things contribute to texture. What we're going to focus on are those enlarged oil glands, large pores, hyperkeratosis. Comedones, the closed comedones and acne bumps, and then also just photo aging overall. So let's just jump right into sebaceous hyperplasia. What is that? Uh, well, basically we have oil glands in the skin and they can go under what we call hyperplasia where they can become larger. And when those glands become larger, they can become extremely prominent and give you a very, very textured appearance to your skin. Now, if you have oily skin, you may already have more prominent sebaceous glands. So be bear in mind, any treatment for this is not gonna eliminate your sebaceous or oil glands, um, and it can just minimize their appearance. So what are your what are the main ingredients you would look for for this? So, so some of the things we talk about when we're talking about oil glands, rosacea, or even acne are going to work here as well. So retinoids are always going to be that staple ingredient that are going to be helpful for acne and oil. Retinoids, salicylic acid, niacinamide, these things that kind of go after oil tend to be very effective. Um, LED uh, that we mentioned in, in our video on LED uh, it was also going to be effective to try to decrease oil production. And if you go to see us in the office, we can actually use a little electric needle to basically <laughs> tap on these sebaceous glands. And that actually does minimize their appearance as it well. Works really well. And it's really actually pretty easy. And it's not like a needle you stick like into the skin and then zap it. You actually like just hover above and then zap it lightly. It's like <laughs> tap. And it's a little, a little weird sensation for people, but extremely effective. It takes two seconds, you know, very minimal side effects. So we do it all the time. As a matter of fact, I need you to do a couple on me. Yeah, I'll do it. I actually think, I think it's akin to licking a battery. I don't know if anyone else has ever done that. I mean, it's a very similar <sighs> sensation. <laughs> Don't like batteries, oh, guys. Don't like batteries, I mean, but what I mean, is happening? We were all young <laughs> ones, right? <laughs> So that's pretty much how you treat sebaceous hyperplasia. The next thing is pores. Again, 
and large pores, not something you can get completely rid of. Also not something that open and close like windows <laughs> or doors as we mentioned before, uh, but we can do things to minimize their appearance. Okay, yeah, and at the base of each of these pores is actually a little oil gland. And because of that, the treatments kind of overlap. So retinoids, niacinamide, and then something that actually might be pretty effective here is microneedling. Microneedling, extremely effective for a lot of different things. And so we did a video on how to minimize the appearance of their pores. Still arguably my favorite, we've maybe made better videos since, I don't know, but still one of my favorite videos of all time but so you can't completely get rid of your pores but you can minimize their appearance and implementing some of these ingredients is going to help you so the next thing is retention hyperkeratosis or just hyperkeratosis of the skin so what does that look like uh, so under the microscope really that top top layer of the skin that stratum corneum this is where just basically it scales up it gets thicker and it's kind of I don't know if it like absorbs light or like reflects reflects no reflects the light in weird ways but like aflac <laughs> <laughs> next sponsor but it looks it just makes everything look flat and dull <laughs> absolutely so this is the thing that when you look at somebody's skin and you say why does that person's skin glow and the light reflects off of it really well and then other people's skin looks dull this is in my opinion the biggest contributor to skin texture and dullness is this retention hyperkeratosis that occurs and really the key thing here is exfoliation exfoliation is going to go the furthest with this and so is a retinoid yeah yeah anything that can help turn the skin over or just remove Move that kind of dead slough of the skin or the wasted skin on top can help with this. So another thing that contributes to texture is just closed comedones, which are basically just pimples that are not a black head, but they're essentially a white head. And they give the skin texture, but they're not like inflammatory. They don't have redness. Um, and basically the same principles of treating acne apply, but exfoliation is going to be critical. Salicylic acid is a great ingredient for this. Retinoids are a great ingredient for this. And so if you kind of know what you're targeting and you know what's causing your skin texture, you can be very tailored in your skincare routine. And then surprise texture here. I just I just had to call, I don't know why, it's just on my mind, uh, milia. So these are little enclosed cysts, like little balloons that sit right under that top layer of the skin. Uh, but the same things help in that if you turn the skin over more frequently with the retinoid or if you exfoliate, remove some of the top layer of the skin, these can help express out or you can help slow them down and prevent them from coming in the first place. Right, and milia is complicated. We don't 100% understand what causes them, but we're gonna talk more about this probably in a, in a full milia video, but we can extract oh, them actually milia. with... <laughs> <laughs> we can use like a little blade to actually extract them and pop out those little cysts of keratin that have built up underneath the skin. Yeah. So now on to sort of the fun part, I guess, of this is what products are going to give you the biggest bang for your buck in the treatment of texture? Yeah. The first one, it's just always a foundational thing. It, it's going to be retinoids. Just it's consistent, you know, and that's like actually something we just always want to offer is something that's going to be consistent and work for most people who are using it. Many of you have noticed in the comments section I, that we always talk about retinoids. I mean, just because they have so, <laughs> so many purposes, right? Like yeah. we mentioned, they go after that sebaceous hyperplasia. They go after the enlarged pores. They go after the retention hyperkeratosis. And so it's like the trifecta of texture. And so what's a good product that you would recommend for this? Uh, you can still use your different. La Roche-Posay has their uh, adapalene version of this over the counter as well. Both are pretty much identical. I think we've said that before, but that can be something you can pick up that has a lot of evidence and studies behind it. That's going to do a lot for you. But for me, I actually, what ended up happening with my texture journey <laughs> is that I actually started with tretinoin, which is a prescription retinoid. And I was like, 70% better. And I was like, you know what? Like I still had this texture and I would complain to Dolly all the time about this. Uh, why am I not 100%? And what pushed me over the edge actually towards, I don't say 100%, but like 90% of improving my texture was exfoliation. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess that's true. I can remember the time when you started putting on your uh, what lactic acid. <laughs> Lactic acid I like because it both moisturizes and exfoliates at the same time. And I have like combo dry skin. So, I, you know, I just try to be as moisturized as possible. So, um, you know, it does really, really well um, at breaking down those bonds between the cells. And we did a whole video on exfoliation, but you can find different forms of exfoliants. Like I said, we have chemical exfoliants, we have physical exfoliants, we have enzyme exfoliants, and they all have the, sort of the same purpose. And that's to improve the skin texture and get rid of that retention hyperkeratosis. So a nice product for this is going to be that Paul's Choice 2 2% BHA because, you know, the salicylic acid is going to, one, help 
uh, remove the texture and improve the texture of the skin, but then it's also going to concentrate in the oil glands and be helpful for some of the sebaceous gland hyperplasia, whatever the oil glands are doing. Exactly. And then some of the other things that you can use, you can use the high strength exfoliants, the one, the ordinary peeling solution or Paula's Choice has their competitor as well. And those are going to be a little bit stronger. So you want to use those like once a week or, or even less than that. And then, you know, they have other lactic acid exfoliants from the ordinary, but you can check out our video on exfoliation to learn more about that. Or uh, you can go into our new product release here from skin fix okay but here's and here's my thing though so like we're talking about exfoliation and you use it kind of non-discriminately it's all over the face you kind of treat every area of your skin it's, it's as if it's the same and everyone has combination skin i think to some extent because he mentioned combination skin he has it i have some combination skin and the thing i like about the skin fix exfoliating pads is you can deliberately use it in specific areas where you need the benefit the most you can use it on areas where the skin is thicker and will tolerate it better um and then you can leave like his sensitive eyelids, you can leave those alone. I mean, you shouldn't be getting this near your eyes anyway, but you can leave skin like that, that's alone. You can leave it alone. All right, so new product release, drum roll please. Okay, no response from him, that's fine. Uh, Skin Fix Resurface Plus HA BHA Enzyme Exfoliating Pads. So what are these? These are exfoliating pads. Like he mentioned, he doesn't like it when the liquid just kind of goes indiscriminately anywhere. And as a pad, you can use it on targeted areas that you want to target. And these are actually larger than sort of most exfoliant pads are that I've experienced. Usually they're much smaller, which allows you to use them just on the face and then kind of follow with the body or the arms or the neck or other areas that you want to target as well. And then we'll go into the ingredients. Ingredients, critical for us. We always do an ingredient breakdown before I, before I put anything on my face. I'm always looking at the ingredients pretty close so let's key highlighted ingredients, glycolic acid. So this alpha hydroxy acid, we talked about it before, they break down the little bonds between the skin cells, they help remove them. Glycolic acid can make you a little more sun sensitive. And then it comes alongside and partners with this beta hydroxy acid comes with salicylic acid, which also is really good. It dissolves into your oil glands, helps to remove oil. So one of the causes of texture being the sebaceous gland hyperplasia and the enlarged pores, it's gonna go after that as well. Plus it has my favorite exfoliant, lactic acid because it moisturizes and exfoliates at the same time. So we're talking about glycolic acid, lactic acid, salicylic acid, his favorite ingredient, niacinamide. Niacinamide at a 2% concentration, which <laughs> is good shown, concentration, which is a good concentration based on the studies that we've read. And also it has a um, bromelain, which is an enzyme exfoliant. And we mentioned it very briefly in our exfoliation video, but bromelain um, comes from pineapples, right? It does. <laughs> so yeah. that also has an enzyme exfoliating benefit. So this is really has a lot of excellent, excellent ingredients in it and also is fragrant free, uh, avoids a lot of the ingredients that I try to avoid in my skincare products. So definitely passes the test there. And actually it has witch hazel, which Dr. Maxfield did a whole <laughs> video on and we'll link that above and you can learn more about witch hazel there. So I would personally use this at night after cleansing, pat dry, use the exfoliating pads, tap them gently into the skin, let them do their thing let it sit there for like a minute or so and then just moisturize over the top. It's gonna to make you more sensitive to the sun because it has glycolic acid in it. So what I would do is definitely wear sunscreen in the morning, but I like it as part of a night routine. And how many times a week, and I know we mentioned this before, how often would you use these? So, I mean, you can use this once a week. I think that's fine. I think it's gonna depend on your skin type. And actually that's one of the most important questions we get. Like people ask how frequently can you use this? How can you use it? It's just is so variable on your skin. So if you're getting irritation, you're gonna to have to back it off. Even if you were doing once a week, if you are super resilient, you might be able to do it more frequently, but I think once a week is a good sweet spot. Right, once a week, twice a week. And again, it kind of goes back to being deliberate about what you're targeting. Now, if you're targeting sort of oil glands, maybe you can use a little bit more often. But if you're just targeting that retention hyperkeratosis aspect, then you know it does take a while for new skin cells to float to the top of the skin. So you really only need to do it maybe once a week, maybe maximum twice a week. And so just yeah. be thoughtful about what you're using it for. But very effective ingredients, um, something I've actually had them for about two months now. So I've been able to see how well my skin tolerates them and they did really well for me. So yeah, that's good. It's great. So anyway, great product, great ingredients is going to be very effective as what it says it's going to do It's going to improve skin texture. Um, actually, when they were formulating this product, they were very thoughtful about malassezia folliculitis when I, when I was talking to them about this. And basically they they sort of formulated these exfoliants with malassezia folliculitis in mind as making sure that it wouldn't exacerbate it and that it would potentially have some benefit in malassezia folliculitis or fungal acne as well. So I, I thought that was really interesting. In, in, in addition to improving texture, um, they were very thoughtful about the ingredients they chose uh, for people that are prone to malassezia folliculitis.
Yeah, I think the glycolic acid would actually uh, serve functionally there to get rid of the yeast on your skin, even before the fungal acne uh, actually starts. I'm just surprised he caught it when he threw it up in the air. <laughs> I have, I'm incredibly, I'm incredibly athletic. <laughs> anyway, uh, may not show, but you know. Next up, let's talk a little bit about some procedures that we do that are gonna have a lot of benefit in skin texture. Yeah, um, so the at-home one, I think that would be useful for you, especially for the hyperkeratosis part of this, is gonna be uh, dermaplaning with that little tinkle razor that we've actually talked about before. <laughs> yeah, so the little tinkle razors, they remove the vellus hairs as well, and vellus hairs actually do give the appearance uh, of having texture to the skin. So they remove the little ha hairs on the skin. They also exfoliate that top layer of the skin are definitely gonna improve texture. Now, not as effective as dermaplaning with a razor blade at the office, but is gonna still have some benefit um, in exfoliating the skin. Microneedling is also gonna be helpful. Chemical peels will also be helpful here, like medical grade chemical peels. So, you know, a combination of things, but I think probably biggest bang for your buck, dermaplaning. Yeah, I think that would be pretty helpful. And I feel like we're talking about lasers a lot more lately, but like the CO2 laser, like fractionated CO2 laser here is just again, gonna be probably the ultimate fix for a lot of these textures. It just non-specifically is just gonna oblate and replace the top layer of the skin and let a new one grow in, so. Absolutely. So we always have different level ups that we can go through and give you improved skin texture and get you that healthy, dewy skin. Dewy, we, we need a new word. I, okay, so new word for dewy. I think we need something else like supple. Or, or like drippy or glistening, glossy. I want just some, some suggestions. I, I want. I think we need it. We need. We need to collectively push a new word. No, I like dewy because dewy gives you the sense of like the morning dew, you know, and it just gives you this idea that it's like moisturized but not oily. You we can do I mean? better. Dewy is like is like there's oily here and then there's dry here and somewhere in between that is dewy, <laughs> and that's my life goal. <laughs> So that's the basics on what causes texture on the skin. We talked about what you can use to help treat it. I hope this was helpful for you. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please like, comment, subscribe, share with a friend. Uh, we appreciate all of your support. Please leave some comments below and we'll do our best to answer them. Thank you guys all so much. We appreciate it. Yeah, I've been trying to race him for like three years. I'm like, he said he says he's pretty fast. I'm like, let's race. No, he is never gonna beat me in a race, and I'll tell you why. So he buys like he's like one of those people that buys shoes that are too big for him because he thinks he's gonna grow into them, even though he stopped growing a long time ago. So his shoes are not equipped to beat me in a foot race. I could I could beat you in a foot race without shoes on. <laughs> well then, I mean, yeah. No, you couldn't. <laughs>